you, do you ever have questions about parts of your body? Ever wondered exactly how things work down there? A little too low. Nope, higher than that, you two. This isn't one of those videos. We're talking about the kidney. Oh! Gosh, mister, how does the kidney work? Whoa there, scamp. First, we have to understand what the kidney consists of. Do you like beans? Golly, I sure do. But sometimes they make my tummy hurt. They sure do. Well, the kidney is shaped just like a giant bee. A two-layered bee. The outer layer is called the cortex, and the inner layer is called the medulla. Running through these two parts is a nephron. You have over two million of these inside your kidneys. Ah! Get them out! Get them out! Ha ha ha! Not quite, youngin. You see, nephrons are hollow tubes closed at one end that serve an important function. They participate in a magical process called filtration. Jeepers, mister, what's that? Well, this process begins in the cortex of your kidney in the glomerulus, a ball-like tuft of capillaries inside a hollow balloon-like structure called Bowman's capsule. Filtrate derived from the blood must first pass across these capillaries through openings called fenestra, and then pass through Bowman's capsule through openings formed by photocytes. Golly gee, what does that mean? Well, son, not everything gets across those barriers. Here's an example. Ryan, would you come out here for a moment? Now, if you two could hold your arms up, forming a barrier just like when you play Red Rover at school. Let's pretend Ryan here is albumin. Albumin tries to get across that barrier, but it's too big to do it. So normally, it doesn't get filtered. Now, let's pretend you two are smaller molecules like glucose and electrolytes. Ryan, would you come back out for one moment? Now, as were to be like a glucose or electrolyte, let's see what might happen. Amazing! You were able to get filtered. See how easy you get through? So, as long as something is small enough, it can get through? Not quite, little one. There's also a charge barrier. Is it like my visa? Ha ha ha! A little. You see, there are a large number of sialic and aspartic acid molecules which are negatively charged. So, much like your credit card, if something has too many negative charges, it doesn't get through either. Numbers have never been my strong suit. Ha ha ha! However, that doesn't mean they're not important. In fact, here are some very important numbers you should know about the kidney. Our faithful assistant, Ryan, will show them. Ryan, am I interrupting something? You can continue your snack later, Ryan. Okay, kids, now that you know what glomerular filtration is, let's see some of the factors that affect it. Having a little trouble getting it up? Ha! Huh, try the blue pill. Thanks, Ryan, but don't go too far. You must have been wondering if you've learned everything by now. Gosh, that is what I'm wondering. Not even close, sport. You see, in addition to having these four different factors affecting the GFR, which are the filtration coefficient, the glomerular capillary hydraulic pressure, the hydraulic pressure in Bowman's capsule, and the oncotic or protein pressure in the glomerular capillaries, the kidneys also have something called autoregulation. Now, what happens in autoregulation is an increase in renal arterial pressure will increase the pressure in the glomerulus, which will increase the glomerular filtration rate the rate of fluid flow through the proximal tubule, and ultimately, the flow through the macula densa. This will generate a vasoconstrictor signal in the juxtaglomerular apparatus, and lead to apron arterial constriction, thereby decreasing the pressure that began the whole thing in the first place. Wow! Wow, indeed!
but there's still one more important concept we need to cover. Ryan, can you please come out again? Ryan, where is he?